Good afternoon and welcome to our What's Buzzing at Georgia Tech webinar series. We are so excited that you are joining us here today. Today is our Tech Talks with Dean Stein. He is also joined by a very special guest who he will introduce shortly. Uh, we would just like to thank everybody for just taking the time out of their schedule. We know that this time of the year is uh, very busy for everybody, parents and students included and family members, uh, midterms, uh, different on-campus events. A virtual event so we're just very excited about this time of the year um, and just excited about getting a conversation started about what's going on on campus and how we can be here to support you um, if you have any questions for uh, dean stein and our special guests uh, please feel free to utilize the q a chat box we should be off to your right once again if you have any uh, questions please feel free to utilize the q a chat box we'll be sure to get to those at the end of the presentation if you give me a few moments, I will transition to our PowerPoint and we will begin. And without further ado, I would like to welcome our Vice President and Dean of Students, Dean Stein. So greetings from Atlanta. Uh, I hope you are all well and uh, getting along here. Uh, I want to I always start by kind of just giving you a sense of where we are in the semester, just so you know what um, you're a student is up against and, and what's been going on here. So we are in week seven. OK, so we're almost right smack in the middle of spring semester. Uh, so it is a, a busy time um, for faculty and students. Uh, for students, uh, first and second year students, they would have just come off of their first round of exams. For our upper class students, they may be heading into midterms. So if you hear your students saying that they are, are stressed and it's busy and they have a lot of work, uh, they are being very honest with you, okay? Um, now, having said that, I always remind you that there's tremendous support on the campus, both academic and otherwise and that if they are in need of help and assistance in a course or uh, generally in terms of uh, dealing with stress or coping with it, uh, they should reach out to us or you can reach out and we will assist them. Um, I have a very special guest today and that's Dr. Larry Jacobs. Uh, he's a good colleague of ours and we work very closely with him. He is the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and a Professor in Engineering. He's been at Tech many, many years, and he knows Georgia Tech quite well, and he knows our students very well, and he has a terrific relationship with our students. And so uh, he is a real ally for students, and, uh, and we really appreciate him in the Division of Student Life. Uh, Larry and I troubleshoot situations all the time uh, that you know our kind of students are dealing with and stuff. So um, I want to start by just kind of giving you a sense of you know what's going on here and then Larry will transition over to some academic key dates and then we'll open it up for questions and answers because I'm sure you have some questions. But I want to reassure you that as we move through this whole academic year and even spring semester, we have uh, done more and more activities on campus with the proper social distancing, following the guidelines and stuff. But one of the things we know is that students are looking for more activity and more engagement and involvement. Uh, that has been a challenge all year uh, and we're trying to meet that challenge. So there is a smattering of different kinds of events that students can get in, involved in. Um, you know, there's a 5K on campus. If the student is interested, they can walk or run it. There's a campus feud game show on the 12th. Um, there's family weekend that's being planned. Uh, there's GT night at the zoo. Uh, and then on the 16th and 24th, we have mid semester break days. Now, these are days that students will have no classes and it's a day of respite both for faculty and students. Now, students can do a variety of different things on that day. They can sleep in, okay? They could just take the day and relax and or they could choose to get involved in either in-person or virtual activities that are being 
planned on campus. So we have um, that, uh, you know, available to students. Um, I just was corrected, I'm sorry, and the GT night at the zoo is the 13th of March, not the 16th, so I stand corrected. Sorry about that. But so those are uh, different things and Sting Break, which is a kind of fun carnival concert evening, again, with all the right guidelines and stuff is on um, the 16th, that, that Tuesday evening. Faculty have been asked, told, uh, that they should not be planning any quizzes and tests right after it. So nothing should occur on Wednesday, which would force the student to stay in the library and study all day. That we wanted this truly, these two days to truly be uh, days of a break um, and, and just time to kind of relax. Now we do know, we want to acknowledge, we do know students are extremely disappointed that we don't have spring break. OK, and we're disappointed. I mean, this is not ideal. Uh, it comes out of necessity uh, in terms of trying to keep us in a safe space so that we can get through the semester. Uh, you know, we know the two days and two different weeks is not the same as having a full week. Um, and the plan obviously is when we can get back to a kind of normal schedule of what one uh, a spring semester typically looks like. We will we will do that. Next slide, please. And here's some additional uh, activities that they can get involved in. Uh, you know, these are the kinds of activities we're offering were suggestions from students. And so you have students that have all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, loves and activities, uh, laser tag, concerts, things like that. So we're trying to just meet the needs, uh, knowing that we're, we're not going to meet every student's need, but uh, movie night uh, that a student can show up and, and participate in and stuff. Uh, and we do have a student concert, which is a kickoff to the Skyline series, which the Office of the Arts will be doing through the whole rest of the spring semester, a series of outdoor kinds of um, artistic uh, events that will be occurring. Next slide. So one of the things that we are offering is the spring break in a box. OK, this came because families were contacting uh, our parent program office saying that they would like to do something for their student in light of the fact that we would not be having a full spring break. And this concept initiative um, was formed. OK, so uh, it is a it's a wonderful thing. It's a, it'd be a nice surprise. Um, the students would get the package. It includes, you know, a variety of different things, as you can see. Uh, there is a personalized note. You kind of tell us what you would like to be written in the note. We have some of our student assistants writing out those notes and putting it inside. Um, and it's a way of sending kind of a virtual hug from home. Uh, parents across the country and international families have opted into this and uh, are, you know, sending them. So, um, you know, if you're interested, uh, there is an order date by the 5th and uh, just make sure that you can uh, set that up. Um, but I, I do think a lot of students uh, would appreciate this at this point in the term. Next slide. And uh, this is the code. So if you want to take a picture of that, then you can just link onto that uh, code and um, use it to um, order it. So. All right, next slide. Again, we said family weekend. It'll be a hybrid model, both in person and virtual. Uh, we know that uh, it's difficult for individuals to travel across the country or internationally and stuff, so uh, we're offering this hybrid model. Um, there will be an update from the president. There'll be another tech talk with myself. There'll be campus tours um, with your student, webinars with the colleges, and then, as I said, the GT night. Uh, uh, at the zoo. Uh, it again is, is not the full complement of what we typically do. Uh, one of the things that we have tried since last spring is to hold on to traditions that we typically have as a way of not just postponing and putting everything on hold. So we're not like reaching the mark is what we typically do, but we are trying to at least offer something. And so a lot of the traditions that come with spring semester as we end an academic year, a lot of the leadership banquets and graduation, we're going to be hosting those again as we did last spring uh, so that students are not just um, 
not having any kind of traditional type end of the year ceremonies and stuff. Next slide, please. Uh, I just wanted to highlight that uh, we have some new staff in the division. Uh, we ended up hiring uh, three new therapists in our counseling center. All are terrific seasoned uh, professionals. Uh, we ended up with a new associate dean and director of student integrity. He has joined us uh, and is, uh, you know, getting acclimated to Georgia Tech um, and to our culture. And then we have two searches in progress right now for two additional psychologists and two additional care clinical case managers in our GT Care Center. I, I, I always want to reiterate to you that we are, uh, you know, fully uh, supportive of mental health on this campus. Um, we have somewhere in the range of between 35 and 40 mental health professionals that work with students and um, and are there for them. And so uh, we're adding a few more and we're filling in some positions that were vacant. So uh, we will continue to do that and meet the needs of students. If this is ever a concern for you in terms of the well-being of your student, then you should absolutely reach out to us. Let us know that and then we will do the appropriate intervention um, with your student. Next slide. All right, so I'm going to turn this over now to Larry, who can walk through some of the um, you know, key dates for academic stuff. Thanks. Thanks so much, John, and, and welcome everyone. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to uh, speak to you. Uh, as John said, I'm, uh, I've been at Georgia Tech for 32 years. Um, uh, current job is Associate Dean for Academics in the College of Engineering, and I'm also co-chair of the Restart Task Force. So we are the academic group that has been spending the last year looking at uh, fall, spring, and now fall again. And so I, I just wanted to give you a sense of what your student will be facing coming up. And, and, and the, the real big one for us from an, besides the, the, the break is the, um, uh, the, do I, the registration, maybe it's the next slide. Yeah. The next slide. Yeah. Yes. Do I see am I, there it is. That's the one I, that's the one I wanted. OK, so um, from a from a registration, we're thinking in terms of, you know, we, we register your student will register for summer and fall simultaneously. I'll focus on fall because summer is always different. Uh, and basically they will be able to see the schedule on Oscar on March 17th. OK, that is and then they'll have basically 12 days between March 17th and March 29th for when phase one registration begins. Then we'll go, you know, the phase one registration will it will basically end after, you know, the way we always do after uh, after May, then then we'll reopen again in August for looking at classes to start in August 23rd. So um, the, the big change, and again, from an overall philosophy, and uh, President Cabrera just sent a, a, a message out on this today, is that we're trying to make fall of 21 to look as closely as possible to fall of 19 within the guidelines again assuming that the cdc allows us we'll talk classroom space that we can return to full full classroom space and the vaccines the vaccines are flowing again uh, uh freely so that is the goal so your student when they look at the schedule uh, of classes on march 17th will look like a regular, you know, a regular uh, schedule there. We will get rid of the hybrid. It's basically a residential class or an online class, and that will be very much so the approach. Uh, we will have built in a contingency plan if the if we're, you know, if, you know, we're not going to be able to meet that schedule, we will pivot and uh, we can talk about how we will pivot, what the decisions will be. And, you know, looking at a July 1, you know, decision date 
to saying, okay, this is where we're going to have to pivot. But we we feel really confident we should know much early, much sooner than that. And we should know, again, this will be national news. This will be us and everyone else, you know, that again, the vaccines are flowing, that the CDC allows us to, to, to have the kinds of capacities that we want to have in the classroom to be able to do the in-person piece. We are also going to try to coordinate better with housing this year from a housing deadlines perspective that that if your if your student uh, has has on campus housing uh, and there's a series of great gradations when they will lose their deposit, we are timing better with housing to be able to basically say, look, we will give you an academic update with let's say five days beforehand so that uh, the, your student can make a decision if they you know if they don't think the the fall will look the way they they want it to. Um, John, does that sound like a, a, a good level? Uh, and then we can go to questions. Yeah, let's go back to the previous slide um, only because I just want to, uh, yeah. why don't you say something about the March 17th for this semester in terms of withdrawal? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm literally, I, I taught this morning. I, I Something didn't go well just technically with the problem I presented. And I'm trying to figure out what I what I did wrong in, in the class. So I was, I was doing that on the side. So this is this is a big day. This is again the withdrawal day. Um, they can this you know they have until the, you know the seventeenth you know to withdraw from a class from an academic perspective. It ha it's no penalty. It's a W. A W sh shows up, but this is when you should have this conversation with your student. You know, do you you know is the you know is there a class that you think you should drop and then use that time to to concentrate on your other classes? So um, you know, I, I would much rather see a W on a student's record than you know let's say a d or an f you know something like that so this is the time I, I i met with a student yesterday who was in one of my classes who basically took too many hours and then they made the decision look to to basically be able to focus on their other classes they actually ended up dropping my class which i was disappointed at but you know i think it was a for this particular student i think it was a very good decision so that's the you know that's the the deadline the, the great substitution is 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 for freshmen and and we can get, jump into the weeds on that. But you see the two institute uh, breaks. And ag again, we are doing the way we're ending the semester will look similar to the way we ended fall and the way we normally do where we have final instruction day on a Friday, then we'll have two days of, we, we can't really call it a reading period, but we're, we don't give, we can't give any kind of exams and things like that. Then we'll go into final exams. We have we do have a, a single reading day. That's that that Wednesday. That is, um, you know, no classes, no no you know nothing at all. And then we go into final exams. The difference is this year because of Thanksgiving in the in the fall, we basically wanted everyone to leave campus and you know not not come back. What we didn't want to do is travel and then come back. And here, since there's we're not ending over Thanksgiving, you know, we're we're assuming a lot of the students will still will still stick around. But the 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 finals should be generally speaking given in a remote in a remote fashion. Yeah, I do want to uh, this withdrawal deadline. Just again, with uh, just so you understand, that should be a strategic decision on the students' part. Like Dr. Jacobs was saying, that you know that they're looking at it and they're they're making a decision that it's in their best interest to maybe withdraw from the class. Uh, if it means that they're going to really end up with a low grade. It, you don't just do that for the sake of doing it. It should really be a strategic decision. And, you know, we don't encourage it, but it is necessary sometimes, and it is a smart thing to do. On the grade substitution, uh, it, it is a majority first year students use it, but it's open to all students now. So any student can do a great sub. Um, uh, that was changed a little while ago. But uh, again, that's a that's just something they can learn more about by just going to the registrar's website um, and learning if they want to consider a great substitution in terms of retaking a class that they may have not done uh, as well. That mean that would translate to a D or less. OK, so these are just key dates and all of this is published on uh, the registrar's website and um, you know, but on the calendar. But sometimes students just need reminders and we wanted you to know these key dates as we move through the, the rest of the term. So 
Um, I do want to talk one briefly just on March 15th during as part of uh, the family weekend. Uh, we will be doing a panel, uh, an academic panel, uh, myself, Dr. Jacobs and Dr. Ross, Kyla Ross. The three of us will uh, speak and also answer questions and it'll be more like a town hall type approach where uh, we will speak to you and you will speak to us about uh, the experiences that your students have ha are having and stuff. So that's going to be uh, 6 to 7 p.m. Um, our time here uh, so that we can reach a broader audience across the, the country and, and potentially internationally. So, um, you know, if you are interested, then uh, just plan on uh, logging on on March 15th between 6 and 7 and uh, Tyler and Lacey will be making sure that information is out and you know how to access it and stuff. So. All right, so at this point, uh, what we would like to do is to see if there are any questions uh, that we might, um, you know, answer at this time. Yes, thank you so much, Dean Stein and, and Larry for taking the time out to talk about a few things with us. So our first question. My son is a freshman and we are out of state. Both semesters, my son signed up for classes that were supposed to be hybrid. He has been 100% virtual. He moved to an apartment as suggested early in the year and basically has been in his room ever since. Virtual college has not been as fitting for him. Um, would you mind being more transparent as you, with your plans for next semester and moving forward so that we accurately decide what is in his best interest? John, want me to take that or do you? You want to start and then I Sure, can... and this is again, and I we're, we're particularly concerned about the, the freshman, the, the, the current freshman. And, and first off, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, your student is not having the the experience that they you know they had hoped. We um, this has been a very difficult. Uh, again, I've been here 30 years. This is by far the most difficult um, two semesters I've ever I've ever had. And we're really, you know, we're really trying to make right, you know, do do right by our students. So that's that's the the main reason we're having this. You know, approaching the fall, trying to be as transparent as possible. That's why the the, the default for us, we had a choice. We could make the default to be like uh, fall of 20, or we could make the default be like fall of 19. And we made a very conscious decision to make the default to be fall of 20. Excuse me, fall of 19, not fall of 20. That that's our that's our goal. We think we feel very strongly we can meet it. Uh, we we will you, you know there will be some classes. The the majority of the classes will be um, will be fully residential. The goal is to have a student the 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 incoming freshman and the the continuing sophomore. So putting your student in that situation, we're going to do we're going to we're going to bias towards making their classes as in person as possible that we feel as if those are the students that really need really need to have that make those connections those you know those connections that occur naturally in in the class and so we're we're really looking for that but we realize that we are in a pandemic and we we might not be able to deliver what we we want to deliver so we're going to try to communicate that early and we're going to try to communicate these are the trip points or these are the things that we're looking at again looking at CDC guidelines and looking at K through 12 and what's happening on that, uh, you know, that we're going to, you know, you know, follow those, um, you know, those those guidelines. The choke point for us is really the space, the student, the, the classroom. Again, the, I, 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 I taught this morning in the hybrid f format, so I taught an in-person uh, uh, today. I did an in-person class at eight o'clock this morning. It's a junior level engineering class. I have about 72 students registered for it. The class, the classroom can sit, you know, in socially distance, can sit about 28 students. And so I invite again those students and just the, by the nature of it, I can I can invite every student who wants to come, you know, into class, you know, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, into my classroom. But if I again, the goal is my class in the fall. 
I will have, I want to have all 70, 72 of those students to be able to fit in that class and to be able to go like it would have been fall of, of 19 and have that class in the residential experience. But we're only going to be able to do that first obviously we're going to require masks even with the vaccination we feel in the fall that masks will have to be required but we have to be allowed to basically relax the social distancing requirements and to physically be able to fit the students in into the classroom um, thank you so much uh yeah. Larry, for answering that we'll definitely come back to you if we have any more academic related questions uh the next question is for dean stein for clarification, are we still in phase 1A of our vaccination rollout plan? Um, if you could just update us on the status of that. Yeah, uh, and, and let me let me just go back to the previous uh, question because uh, I'm also I'm teaching a freshman seminar GT1000, and it is a, it's it's all residential. Uh, I, I capped it at a small number so that I could keep it residential. And on the first day of class, I was asking the students. What else are you taking and how many in person experiences are you having? Um, and and they not many, I'll honest, like, well, you know, they may have a lab once a week or whatever. OK, um, and so what I would suggest that you do and have your student do is to ask the question of the faculty member uh, in a respectful way, obviously, but ask the question and say, you know, this was supposed to be a hybrid are we planning on meeting in person at all this semester? And just plant the seed in the faculty member's mind uh, in terms of the fact that some students may really want to be doing that. OK, there's nothing wrong. And then the faculty member will respond back. OK, but but encourage them to do that and have that dialogue with with their faculty. Um, I think that'll be very helpful for the student and very helpful for the faculty member. Um, yes, we are in 1A. Uh, we are waiting from guidance from the state um, as to when we can move into beyond 1A. Uh, we don't know when that's going to happen. Uh, we're under strict guidelines to, that we have to follow, otherwise we're in jeopardy of uh, not receiving uh, vaccines. So the hardest thing for Dr. Holton, who runs our health center and our whole um, vaccination program, is to be able to predict things. Okay, now we continue to work with the population of eligible people within 1A here at the Institute. And, you know, we've done a really good job there of reaching those uh, individuals and encouraging them to uh, set a time, an appointment, come over and get vaccinated. We are all ready to launch beyond 1A once the green light comes. OK, there's been a number of people working on plans and we're set to go, but uh, I at this moment can't predict when that's going to happen. OK. Thank you. We have a comment. Uh, my student also has a test on Thursday after the day off. I'm assuming they're talking about sting break. They are talking probably about the 25th, I believe, because the yeah. Wednesday would be the 24th. Right. Uh, really, faculty were not supposed to be doing that. We would ask them to not put a test on the day after the um, day off. So um, if that parent um, wants to discreetly email me privately, please, because I don't want to start calling faculty out and stuff. But if you email me privately, then we will follow up and uh, talk to or Dr. Ross because she does a lot with the faculty on conflict resolution and stuff. We'll follow up and, and try to see if that faculty member could rearrange that. Uh, thank you for telling us that, but uh, email me um, uh, and Tyler and uh, Lacey can uh, let you know uh, what my email address is or it's right online. You can find it. So. Is, is the plan still to have as many students as possible vaccinated by the end of the semester? That's the plan. That's the plan. But you know what I would say is that we're already delayed a little bit. We thought we would be further along than we are. Honestly, uh, we thought we might already be in 1B or the next uh, phase after 1A and we're not. And so, you know, the clock is ticking. We're at, we're halfway through the semester. So the question is, can we get to the finish line in time 
to vaccinate our students before they leave if they're leaving for the summer. So our hope is and our plan is to be able to do that. But what I'm going to say is that there, there, we may run out of time here for, for just logistical reasons. And at that point, then um, families are going to need to figure out how to make that happen back home. Now, if they're staying with us for the summer, the testing and vaccination program will continue. That will be ongoing. Thank you so much, Dean Stein. We have another pretty interesting question as well, just considering our new hire for some parents who may be new to Georgia Tech. Uh, what is a director of student integrity? Um, what do they do and what are I guess what are their uh, what is their purview? Sure, the director of student integrity is uh, the office of student integrity is the office that adjudicates and really the code of conduct and the honor code. We have two codes here that really are kind of the rules and regulations for all students, uh, graduate and undergraduate students. The honor code is in relation to academics and the code of conduct is non academic. The director of that um, program uh, is someone who works with the staff to adjudicate um, question, situations that need to go through a process because a faculty member or a student or someone else in the community has said that they believe that the student violated the code, either the honor code or the code of conduct. OK, so um, and there's a there's a whole process and you can read these codes. They're online and you can get a sense of the um, you know process. The other thing the office does is really though to remind and promote um, integrity. Integrity is a major piece of um, you know uh, our, how we function here. Uh, the honor code actually uh, was started by students at Georgia Tech. They're the ones that created it many, many years ago and stuff. And so it's at the heart and soul of you know who we are, and it protects our reputation and it protects students' degrees. And so we take it very seriously. Uh, but what I will say is that it's an office that you know your student really doesn't want to be involved in. <laughs> okay, it's one that you try not to um, be called to only because it's usually not for good reasons. Thank you so much for that, Dean Stein. Um, just in regards, uh, we have another parent just kind of expressing some sentiments about the hybrid course offerings this semester. Um, they want to know why are professors not mandated to do some in-person classes this semester? Uh, you want Larry? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. And and again, and so uh, w w when we built the spring, uh, again, the, the 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 plan again. First, we had to move some classes legitimately to online or remote. And if you think the reasons we did that, there were faculty accommodations uh, and uh, then there were there's certain classes. Again, we can talk about the computer science classes where we have a lot of experience teaching these classes online and just frankly the demand for our computer science classes certainly that first sequence of classes the students you know every every one of our students needs every one of our undergraduate students is required to take a, a computer science class and most take more than one uh, just you know the number of students that take a, a, a minor in computer science so there's just a lot of demand on those computer science classes and certainly the lower level ones and so those tend to go more be taught more in the, the the online version than in the hybrid version. Now, with the hybrid uh, and going back, and I will re reiterate what uh, you know, what you know, John Stein, what Dean Stein just said uh, earlier um, is again, if, if your if your student is in a hybrid class, hybrid does not equal remote, and we were very clear on that. And the and the faculty had to publish and. Your student, when they registered, should should have seen that a set of of expectations. This is the way I planned as the instructor to teach the course, and we are holding our faculty accountable for to that. And so, this is the kind of thing in in a discreet way. If if a, if a class is listed as hybrid, that you know, and and the, your student feels that that class is not being you know delivered in the way it was promised, the the, the first thing is always good to talk to the instructor again in a non-threatening way. I know again I was uh, dealing with a student in uh, 
let's say our 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 our, our, our physics class, our 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 our, our two phrases. The first one is particle dynamics, and the second second one is electromagnetic wave EMAG and and party die is what this the students call it. Uh, that class, the again the the particle dynamics dependent on the section they're in is taught where the the lecture is going to be offered remotely but the labs are in person now there was a delay in you know built in and that was published in the expectation that the that the in-person labs would not start until and i don't have the date in on 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 my mind but i i spoke to the instructor per uh, student feedback and yes they they met that or they were going to meet that that uh, deadline so we are moving towards you know there are courses that legitimately as part of the design uh, are um, you know the the in-person portion will occur later but this is where good communication and and if the if this if the class is not being offered the way it should uh, Please, you know, and and the instructor does not give them this the uh, the you know the the response that you know they know that that you know should be given. Then, you know, again, talk to me, talk to you know, have them email me, have them email you know Dean Stein. You know, I, I would prefer you know to go through the the process. Maybe talk to their academic advisor, but you know, certainly you know, time is of the essence here, and we are we are trying to run down these things and determine exactly what's happening. Thank you, Larry. Uh, will mask and social distancing be required when returning to the fall in person classes? I, again, and I, you want you know, I'll try that and we're going to follow the CDC guidelines on this. And and again, everything I'm reading again, you know, my mom is 91 years old and she's in a, a, a home in, in uh, Connecticut and she was vaccinated. I'm really pl uh, proud of her, but and she's out with her friends. She's having dinner with their friends again within the home and they they continue to wear masks okay there's just you know and i i can see for the near future the the mask part yes they are relaxing the social distancing now they're a very tight community now i'm looking at if you saw the cdc came out it is came out with a k through 12 set of guidelines as far as the social distancing but they have not come out with the higher ed set of guidelines we are trying to follow if you look at our lab classes, if you look at our undergraduate research, there's a lot of moving pieces. And so, you know, we're we're hoping you know, they'll give us some, you know, you know, some relaxation on the six feet, but we're going to wait and you know we, we're not going to, you know, you know, make that decision until we we have to. But I would say the masks, yes, and the the social distancing if you know, you know, you know, probably loosened but not disappearing. Thank you so much. My son is a freshman and is planning to stay on campus during the summer, possibly work in one of the labs and take a class. What are his options for housing on campus for the summer? And is there a deadline in applying for that? You can just switch it over. Yeah. Okay. So housing selection is going on now. So he should he should go on to the housing website and look and apply for summer housing. OK, they they will be offering summer housing uh, in a variety of different uh, types of housing, apartments, um, traditional rooms and stuff. So he can see what's being offered this summer. Um, he's welcome to live on campus. Um, you know, we will we will have a full complement of students on campus. So I don't know what the census will be, but uh, residence halls and apartments will be open and uh, students uh, will be enrolling and stuff. So I would suggest but that he should go on to the housing website um, today and look uh, so that he can get, uh, you know, one of his first choices in terms of summer housing. Thank you so much. And the, excuse me, the first year class has missed out on so much. Can you offer them a facet redo this summer? Yeah. As a parent missing out on the on that orientation, I really have no idea about Georgia Tech, especially being an out-of-state parent. Can you do something this summer for us to kind of feel closer to Georgia Tech? Yeah, it's a great point, and it's one that uh, a number of us are talking more and more about in the fact that, uh, you know, we do, we have a whole class 
that did not go through a traditional onboarding the way others have gone on, um, you know, come into Georgia Tech. And we are thinking about what we should and need to do. So stay tuned because we're planning things um, as we onboard our new first year students coming in. Uh, we're trying to also attend to the rising second year students and, and new transfer students that may have come in who just didn't get the same experience. So um, our new students and sophomore programs office will be working on that. Uh, and um, even on the academic side, academic advisors and uh, coaches and everybody else realizes that 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 second year rising second year group uh, also needs some attention and love and and really care uh, because of the fact that they didn't uh, have the same experience coming in. So. We're, we're with you on it. We agree. Yes. Yes. And yes, we and we definitely have one of the best orientation experiences in the country that we to offer. So definitely understand those sentiments. Um, we have a, just a comment and Dean Stein you may, or Larry you may be, be able to expound on this for other parents and family members who do, are not aware of this. Um, I appreciate the efforts to give students chances to gather like the tent setups near central campus and the lawn chairs. Yeah, uh, that was, uh, you know, an initiative that uh, the task force was thinking and brainstorming based on what students, the feedback we were getting. Uh, we jumped on it. A number of the tents were put up. The chairs were put out there. Um, They're being used both formally and informally. We had some asking if they could reserve the tents, so we kind of created certain times that they're reservable uh, so that even an academic advisor could go out and do virtual. They could go out and do in person kind of um, advising with social distancing. And so and and some others have used it for different reasons and stuff. So we agree and that's the kind of goal here is to kind of expand on uh, as many outdoor kinds of events as we move into warmer weather and get through the next uh, segment of this of the semester. So. Any news on summer 2021? Will those classes be offered in person? Yeah, Larry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 2021. Okay. So we're the, the summer has always been different than the than the the spring and fall. Uh, we have a high percentage of our students. Uh, again, the, I, I love the example of the, the student who was coming onto campus, going to do an undergraduate research, and then take a class or two to catch up. I mean that that is very typical, and we like to see our our students do do that. Uh, our, our programs like our Georgia Tech Lorraine, we send. 250 students to you know our, our campus in in, in Metz, France uh, and again this is a great opportunity so we're trying to run as many of those kinds of programs as possible uh, we are the, the summer we are because of the uncertainty that will the summer will look more like the spring I meaning summer of 21 will look more like the spring of 21 where there will be you know the hybrid definition is allowed uh, the expectation the course expectations tool will will be there there will be some residential so your students should really try to register judiciously as far as that's concerned and, and you know decide what what classes they want to take in the format um, that that they they uh, you know that works best for them uh, we have a different uh, uh, i'm going to say cost structure for the summer right where you can take you know by the by the summer you know by the hour so you know it is it is a little bit more advantageous that way um, with the internships, a, a lot of, a lot on the summer is going to depend really on what the internship situation is like, and I'll, and I'll really stress that. Certainly, if your student is not a rising sophomore, if your student is a rising junior or rising senior, we really like to get our students to get an internship. Uh, the companies are in a similar position to us, and they are really, you know, they, they are trying to expand their internships, even if they're uh, a, a, a remote internship it's not as good as a as a, a live one but i would really recommend your students to focus on that i i mentioned the rising freshmen it's often you know that's a tricky one to get an internship on because they just don't have the experience i mean you can or you know or if you're starting a co-op that's a good that's a good semester 
to, uh, you know, you know, be, if you were a rising sophomore, you know, that's a good semester for that. But the, you know, as far as in the classroom is concerned, it will, we will keep the hybrid, we will keep, there will be some residential and we will keep the, you know, the, the remote. So, you know, we will think more spring um, 21 than fall 21. So, so one of the things I want to add to that is that um, I want to caution students and, and caution you that if a student last summer took classes because other op opportunities weren't as readily available, right? Internships, co-ops, jobs, and they just stayed enrolled. And then they were enrolled fall and now they're enrolled spring. I mean, I had a conversation with a second year student just the other day, and after listening to the student, my recommendation to the student is do not enroll in summer school this summer. The student is physically exhausted at this point and, and needs a break. Now, do something else. You know, try to find an internship. Maybe do some research with faculty. I'm not saying don't do anything, but do something else. But some of our students just need a break because they're saying that the, the virtual learning and the, the whole experience has been exhausting and, and, you know, and we believe them, right? And it's been exhausting for some of the faculty too and stuff. So, you know, I think we wanna be careful with this and that uh, we don't just think, oh, I don't have any other option, I'm gonna stay enrolled because we want them to be successful. Um, and, you know, Georgia Tech students, many of them don't know when to step back and just take a break. We have to remind them to do that. I don't know if Larry wants to add anything. Oh, oh John, I, I, I wish those words came out of my mouth and I, I should have I should have answered it that way. I mean, you, you, that that is those, those are the wisest, you know, in this 50 minutes that we're talking. That is the that's the, the, the best advice, you know, I, you know I, I've heard. Yes, people are people are tired, people are burnt out, and it, they don't have to get on that treadmill. They can just take the summer as a good opportunity, you know. And I, you know, though I do like the undergraduate research because it can be different. And then if it's a target, if it's a single targeted class, I, I, I like that too. And and again, by the way, the undergraduate research there, we have them for pay and for credit, and so you know the student can be making making progress. So, but I, I John, I I. I Thank you for saying what you said. I think that's really brilliant. Another question is about the expectation to continue to pay for fees for facilities that are either severely limited or not available. This is it's not an academic, but I will I will say I, yes, this is a really hard question. It's a good question. Um, I I it has to do with the CRC, the, the you know a fee, the transportation fee, all of those fees. Um, again, I personally, I was in the CRC. I, I, I'm a daily user of the CRC. I know uh, the students are using it, but I, I hear from my graduate students, uh, my I hear from the undergraduates in, in the class that says, why why do I have to why do I have to pay this fee? We have tried to ask that question. It is um, you know. It is. This is a complicated place financially. I, I I don't I don't know the answer, John. I I'm gonna. I, I don't know how, if you want to you know try to take you know try to address this, but that is a that's a very good question. Well, I, I what what I want to reassure you is that um, your representatives in terms of your students representatives in terms of student government has been talking to the administration and to. Um, the budget and finance office about this garbage. Okay, it, it is a complicated one. It's, 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 you know, that's all built into the institute's budget uh, for an academic year and stuff. So, uh, but they are continuing to ask uh, that question and continuing to try and get the institute to think about scaling back or prorate uh, things. Um, but uh, that decision is made um, at a high level. Uh, but student government, uh, both at the graduate level and the undergraduate level, have been um, advocating uh, all uh, all year. I have to say about this. So. Thank you, Dean Stein. Then we have a we have a kind of a comment and then a, a question that will probably sh shift maybe to Larry. 
um, just wanting to express um, sentiment for, I guess, the academics affairs to be proactive and monitoring monitoring which classes um, are still fully online, um, recitations, physical labs, and that are that are supposed to be hybrid that are not hybrid. They, they just wanted to know if the institute could be more proactive in terms of monitoring that. And then another question is our student has a CS recitation class that is supposed to be hybrid, but has only met one time. It seems that the recitation classes are smaller and should be given a face to face opportunity for the students. Um, is there a reason why these smaller sessions can't be in person? Pass that over to Larry. OK, and so so I, I agree that the, 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 the model is those and it, the model is those smaller recitation sessions are supposed to be in person. Everyone doesn't have to be, but at this point in the semester, they should be meeting. They should have met in person. So if that's not the case, uh, depending on again, depending on the student's major, uh, whether they, you know, this might be one where again, you, you know, an email, discrete email to to Dean Stein, and then, you know, I, you know, I can take it to ground or or someone else. You can email. I'm, I, you know, I. I, I'm not a, a, a faculty member in, in, in College of Computing. I'm in the College of Engineering, but I know the, the folks over there, and I can at least you know take take that one and investigate that one and do the do the due diligence. The modern monitoring question is a really uh, again we is a is a, another tricky one. We we pride ourselves on academic freedom. This is the the university is built on that. Our faculty look at the administration getting in the classroom and saying are you you know are you doing this makes it makes it makes it difficult now we have we we communicate we have a weekly 8 8 a.m talk with the, the, the provost the, our chief ac academic officer runs uh, i participate in it and we have about a hundred it would be all the the school chairs all the associate chairs and we we run through things like this and we we talk through these things and saying okay you you're you as the school chair you're the front line here you know what your faculty our faculty report directly to the school chairs and you know are you you know are you delivering are you know are your faculty delivering what you say what you see you know, what they've promised to deliver and we use that's the mechanism that we use again we will have a meeting today's tuesday wednesday tomorrow at eight o'clock i will again will reiterate this uh, a lot of that conversation tomorrow is around vaccines and the 1a versus 1a B and there's a lot of anxiety in the faculty, uh, you know, as far as that's concerned. But I, I promise you, I will bring it up, and I, I will, you know, I have spent a lot of time on, you know, you know, talking to my faculty colleagues and say, you know, you know, we have to meet the students where they are, and we have to deliver on what they, what we've promised our students, and we will continue to do that throughout the semester. And I think John. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So let, let me give you kind of a quick example of something we learned from a, a family member who emailed us and then um, it was passed on to Larry and others. Um, the faculty member said it was hybrid and started just teaching remote, okay? And when the faculty member was approached about it, because the, the kind of uh, question came up, what happened was that the students now I don't know how many, but students approached the faculty member and said, hey, you know, can we just do this remotely? It's just easier for all of us to do it that way. So the faculty member agreed thinking he was doing something that the students really wanted, right? But not maybe all students in that class. There were some that really wanted to be in person. Right? So when that was brought to our attention and the faculty member was talked to about it, you know, the faculty member said, hey, I just thought I was doing what you know they had wanted and asked for at that point. And, and what the faculty member was told is, no, you need to go back to what you originally stated because that's what you promised all the students. 
right? And so, you know, then that faculty member agreed. So it's just an example sometimes that, you know, something is playing out a certain way because something else has happened. Um, and, you know, it wasn't exactly the way it was stated. Uh, and in this case, that faculty member really thought he was doing what students really wanted at that point and was expressing uh, a need from him. So, um, but again, we, we learn as we deal with each of these as to what the specifics of a situation is, so. Yes, thank you so much, Dean Stein. And just for the sake of time, we'll kind of zoom through these next couple of questions very quickly. Um, they're kind of short ended questions, so. When will mask not be required? Wow, I don't know. I mean, I, I wish I could predict that. I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, real. It's not our decision. See, we're, we're not the ones that are going to make. Georgia Tech will not make that decision. That decision will be made by the CDC and others, and and then and the USG, and you know, we will follow um, that. Uh, so I, I don't know the answer to that. Another question is: When will COVID nineteen testing on campus end? Will it go throughout the semester? Oh, uh, the, the night the testing will go on. I mean, there there is no end date right now for this. So you know, it's in place. It's it's a running smooth machine, um, and it's well received. Students are testing in really great numbers, and uh, our daily census of individuals on the campus getting tested is quite high. We're really a model program for this, and so we're going to continue this as long as we have to. Great. And then we have just one more quick question. Will student vaccinations be required? I don't believe we're going to be uh, in a position where we can require vaccinations. We are going to strongly, strongly encourage them, but I don't believe we're going to be in a position to require them. Thank you. And then I have a two two part question for Larry. Um, can faculty members be incentivized to host um, student class sessions? in open air tents and then will the tents continue into the fall in terms of that option for students to kind of have class in the tents? We actually did look at the, the tents as an option and some of our peers, uh, Rice University, I, I know the provost there very well, a good friend. They spent on the order of millions of dollars to basically you know, build the build the tents and go out that way. We did not go in that direction. We are using the, um, again, the tents, I think very effectively. I, I see students using them all the time as more drop in. Uh, I, I would say this semester as it as the weather gets nicer, uh, we're trying to have activities, things like office hours, things like walk arounds, having meetings, things like that, as opposed to, again, you know, I'm, again, I teach a very analytical junior level class. It's impossible for me to do that in a tent, you know, to sort of shift shift the, that on a tent, just because I have, you know, a percentage of the students that are not, you know, you know that that are taking it, you know, taking it remotely at their, you know, at their, you know, request. So I, I think we're going for more of those activities, more of those outside activities, but saying, okay, we're going to teach in a tent, you know, is probably not, and probably will not be the solution for the the fall but we've we've looked at it in the past and we will look at it again for sure thank you so much and our last question is for dean stein which is about mental health uh, focusing on mental health we are now in a position to need counseling for our first year students which is primarily due to the remote learning environment what is the best path um, to i guess to access these resources at georgia tech um, is there any hope for fixing things for the end of the semester besides having to ask the teacher. So let me let me talk about just very quickly on accessing uh, the, the the portal for access with mental health is uh, GT care. So the student can log on or call and say that they would like to talk to someone. OK, that's all it takes is that the student do that um, and then they will be assigned uh, a counselor that they can talk to and that counselor will help assess the situation, figure out what support, additional support the student needs. Could be a referral to the counseling center. Uh, it could be a referral to psychiatry if medication was something that uh, may be an option. Could be a referral over to the uh, Center for Academic Success around academic coaching or academic um, tutoring. So 
in a variety of places that a student can, but that's the way that the student access it. And, and I want to reassure you that, you know, last week alone, GT Care Counseling and Psychiatry had over 630 appointments with students. They are busy, but they're available, and uh, a student should not hesitate to um, reach out and make that happen. Um, if the student is uncomfortable doing that and they need some assistance, they should contact me and we will help facilitate that with them so that it's an easier process for them because for some students it's a bit intimidating to do it for the first time. Thank you so much, Denise Stein, and also thank you to you, Dr. Jacobs, just for joining us. And as we mentioned, we will have a sort of a listening session um, just to kind of gauge uh, your perspective on the academic academic experience of your student. Uh, more information on that will be coming soon. Um, please know that this session will be recorded and posted to our website, parents.gatech.edu, under the Stay Connected tab under virtual recording, so that way you can access this and reference this. Um, so many nuggets, so many great resources, and so many uh, great things talked about today. Um, please join us also next Tuesday. We actually have a session on mental health. Um, next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, and that information can be found on our website as well. Um, and once again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us. Uh, we hope your student has a great rest of the week and you as well, and go Jackets.